friends, Chris from the Guest House. I think today's going to be our last message on our Be Healed series, uh, 25th message. Hope you've enjoyed it. Today, one last miracle on the way to Calvary. Listen, Jesus took time to heal a guy's ear. It was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Peter cut off the servant of the high priest's ear, and Jesus put it back on. You know, it's a beautiful story. If you read John 18 and verse 6, a mob of people and soldiers came. They have torches because they're going to try to arrest the light of the world. And in John 18 and 6, when Jesus said, I am he, it says they all fell back to the ground. In other words, many, everybody was slain in the spirit. It was a miniature Armageddon as the slain of the Lord lay all over the place. But let's talk about that story. First of all, seven points. Number one, few things are more dangerous than a preacher who operates in the flesh. Notice Peter drew the sword. The sword is symbolic of words or the word. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That sword can heal or it can harm. Have you ever been cut by a preacher's words? Well, it's, it slit the ear off him and Jesus didn't need Peter's help because he said, don't you realize I, right now I could call and my heavenly father would send me more than 12 legions of angels. I don't need your sword. I've got an army behind me. And then number two, sometimes innocent people are in the wrong place at the wrong time. This was the high priest servant. He's only doing his job. He has no quarrel with Peter, and yet all of a sudden he gets hit. Have you ever been hit blindsided? It might be a, a tornado that you weren't prepared for, or a car accident that was no fault of yours. An innocent person in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then number three, Satan wants to destroy your ability to hear from God. Notice John 18 and verse 10 that Peter cut off the servant's right ear. Now in the Bible, right speaks of covenant. I shake with the right hand and hear with the right ear and he severed his right ear because the devil doesn't want you to ever again be able to hear from God. Now notice he had two ears. One of them was gone and Revelation says if any man has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. But listen, God wants you to have both ears operating, functioning, both physically Physically and spiritually, don't let the devil rob your hearing. And then number four, Jesus will take time to stop on the way to minister to one more human need. Notice they're already cuffing him, they're already beating him, they're trying to drag him out of the garden, but he pushes everyone away and grabs the ear and touches the man and brings healing because Jesus cares about human need. And if he'll do it on the night of his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, don't you think he'll do it for you today? Praise God. And then number five, Jesus offers a touch, not just a touch up. Somebody said, touch it up over here. Just need a touch up. No, no, no. Your heart's broken. Your ears are hurting. You need a touch from the master's hand. Did you know I used to sing with the Gaither Rich, original Gaither vocal band. So I didn't know. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, it was down at the end of the road here on a New Year's Eve uh, at Linda Lynn's house. Gary McSpadden, who pastors in Branson, was the original tenor singer. He's there. We're passing the guitar around. When it was my turn to sing, I said, Gary, you take the tenor part. Linda, you take Gloria's part. I'll take Bill's part. And we sang, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Let him touch your life. You don't need a touch up. You need a divine find touch from God. Number six, Christ performs reconstructive miracles. Now, when he touched his ear, this is Luke 22 and verse 51, touched his ear and healed him. I don't know if it just cauterized the blood flow or if it regrew the ear or if Jesus reached down the mud, picked up the ear and slapped it back on. But without Novocaine, without pre-surgery scrubbing, Jesus regrew an ear or fastened one on after it had been cut off by a sword. That's amazing. Reconstructive miracles. And we've been doing seven points. Let's close with number seven here. I have every confidence that this healing turned this man around for the rest of his life. Now, his name was Malchus. That's in Hebrew Melech. And it would simply mean Malchus would be king or kingly. I don't know if this guy was kingly before he met Jesus because he's serving uh, 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 basically an ungodly Pharisee. However, or high priest. However, when Jesus touched him, Revelation 1 and 6 says he has made us kings and priests unto God. And I believe he lived up to his name kingly because he'd been touched by the king of kings. He'd given a new ear so that he could hear the voice of the Spirit and he restored everything in his life. Listen, friends, if this series is ministered to you, it can restore hearing for you. It can restore your life. I thank you for being with us. Comment, share this with a friend. We'll see you through this week with a new series and have a great day in the Lord.